Hey guys, it is Miss Sim Reno. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And it is another spooky build that I am so excited about because it came together so nicely, at least in my opinion, and so easily. I had so much fun putting this together and kind of trying to figure out a shape for this, as you could tell from the title of this video and the thumbnail, this is going to be a haunted church and graveyard. So when we're thinking about functionality of this lot, I think I made it a generic community lot only because we don't have a graveyard lot type unless we have mods, <laughs> but I wanted to just make it generic. That way there were no requirements associated with it. I could put whatever traits I wanted to along with this lot and I don't know, there just wouldn't be a certain expectation for like NPC Sims showing up and doing particular things, if that makes any sense. That means that the way that this will function is if you do have a Sim pass away in your household or something like that, you could travel to this lot and I believe you can put down the gravestone and that way you'll actually have a graveyard kind of lot to go visit past loved ones, which I think is actually very sweet. I know it kind of is a spooky thing that I'm doing, at least with this one, but I think the functionality of a graveyard in The Sims 4 without having the designated lot type is actually pretty significant. I don't know. I haven't really played around with it that much because I don't do that very often, but I think it does work. And I also know that Kawaii Stacy, if you guys are not familiar with her, she is an absolutely incredible modder. She is responsible for the infamous slice of life mod, but I believe she also had a mod at one point for graveyards and you were actually able to have I think funeral ceremonies or at least kind of like a grieving ceremony. So you could go to the graveyard, which she created an actual lot type for, and then you were able to have mourners come and arrive at certain times to actually say goodbye to a Sim that had passed, which I think is actually really sweet and really important. So I really loved that added gameplay. I haven't played around with it too much since then. I think I briefly played with it when it came out. However, I really don't do a lot of gameplay at this point. I build a lot, so I haven't used it since and I don't actually have it in my game, so I couldn't use it to play test this build. But I think that that's how this lot can work. So if you guys do download this and you do play around with it a bit, definitely let me know because I am curious. But here I am trying to figure out just how I wanted the entrance to look. I do end up keeping this big archway, which in The Sims, in regards to screenshots and everything, having this archway right in the front was actually kind of a pain. <laughs> it didn't allow me to get just like this frontal shot of the church itself. So a lot of the screenshots are actually just from like a higher vantage point. <laughs> but I end up having gravestones on each side of the church. I was thinking that maybe one side would be more of a courtyard and the other side would actually be the graveyard. But I don't know, I just ended up kind of sporadically placing a couple of graves. And if you guys didn't know, oh my gosh, it's so cool. I just figured this out, I think last week when I was playing around with some of the debug vampire stuff but there is actually like a grave plot and I don't mean the grave like headstones. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like an actual grave plot that's kind of like a raised bed of dirt that you can place on the ground, which is a little bit creepy for vampire stuff. <laughs> and I keep saying vampire stuff. I did this last time. I did a video that was a little bit spooky as well. I kept saying vampire stuff. It's a game pack. It is a game pack. It is not a stuff pack. I don't know why I keep saying that, but I am working out the landscaping first, which similar to the Witch's Victorian build that I did earlier this week, I wanted it to look a little bit barren, a little bit dead, but I did want it to still have some amount of landscaping because it just looks so odd to have no plants around a building or something like that, at least in The Sims. You know, in real life, it probably doesn't phase me but in the sims it's so apparently obvious and barren and I also used the exact same shrubs that I used in that other build to kind of line this fence just because I think they do fit into this world even though they're not really dead and or dying <laughs> I think they do work just because they are kind of like a darker green compared to for example some of the plants we might have for Willow Creek or Oasis Springs or something like that but I do really like the landscaping I tried really hard not to just put a tree in every corner I was so tempted to and I don't know why I just have this balancing 
issue in my head where like things have to be symmetrical and balanced <laughs> and sometimes it's really hard to like put that aside when I'm doing landscaping especially placing trees on a lot that I've now divided into halves <laughs> however I did find a way to not give in to that impulse and I didn't put too many trees around because I was actually kind of surprised the kind of like mesquite looking tree. I think that's what it's called in the catalog. I could be totally wrong, but it actually didn't blend in with the others that you can see in the surrounding world. And I just didn't feel comfortable using a lot of them. So there's actually only like two full trees that are in this build and the others are just a little bit dead looking. And I also put a lot of ivy on this church. And then this is when I bust out the plots. I just, I didn't know that these existed and I was just so excited to actually find them because it's so, so perfect. And then I use a few different headstones from vampire stuff specifically. I just said stuff again, the vampire pack. I'm going to try to just say that the vampire pack. And then I also used terrain paint to go ahead and flesh out a pathway and and there's a couple more grave plots over here as well. And then I think I scatter a few benches just so there's somewhere to sit. I mean, there's not really going to be much to do on this kind of lot, right? But at least there are a few benches outside so you can enjoy the courtyard. I put enjoy in little air quotes because I don't know how much you'd enjoy this. <laughs> and then I also found this kind of non-functional fountain it's technically not functional at all so I placed a pool below it and then I put one of the like jet water emitters that you can put in fountains and pools to make it a little bit of a fountain so obviously it's a little bit dry there's only some water that's going to be coming out of it but I was able to make it work and it brought a little bit of life to this lot where I don't think there is much and I also placed that little angel uh, statue on top of the fountain as well so it's kind of like a little bit of a custom fountain and it was a little bit hard to figure out I'm not gonna lie but I think it looks okay and now I'm placing some benches out here in the small courtyard as well as some lights and those are also from the vampire debug menu by the way so those aren't going to be in the catalog and I just love them because they glow very 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 softly they don't emit a lot of light which I think kind of adds to the vibe that we've got going on here. I also added some lights like kind of underneath the fountain. I don't think they really add that much light to the fountain itself but it just gave a very very slight hue. I'm not really sure maybe they really didn't do that much but <laughs> I thought that they added just a little a tiny bit and I also added a few more outdoor lights just so it wasn't entirely dark and then I added a few of these light posts near the entrance as well. And then I spend a little bit of time just adding a lot of like crack and spiderweb details. Again, just like I did in my other build, I think they add so much character, especially to a build like this, where if I'm thinking that it's abandoned or maybe it's not even abandoned, maybe this is like a vampire church. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's used for those who are turning into vampires. So they kind of mourn their mortal life, but then they end up spreading bringing to life again as a vampire. I I really don't know. Um, I haven't played with vampires that much. I did for a very short amount of time. I ended up having my sim ask to be turned and they were turned and I played through some of the, well, it's not like ranks, but I suppose we can kind of consider it that kind of the ranks to be more so immersed with like vampire lore and different abilities, kind of unlocking those with the dueling and, and whatever the case is. It's very similar to how they did spellcasters as well. So I don't know, it's kind of an idea, but I added a ton of ivy around this build too. I pulled out some of the ivy from the Discover University debug menu as well. I did have to make some slight adjustments just because those pieces of ivy are pretty big and they were kind of clipping onto the interior at times. So I had to make a few tweaks here and there, but it ended up working and I think it looks really, really nice. I mean, I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this, but I think it's perfect. And like I mentioned at the beginning, the shape of this church is so simple, but it actually took me about three days to figure out. I didn't really know what I wanted it to look like. I I kind of knew I wanted it to look semi-Victorian and just really, really old. I wanted it to fit into this world, but I just wasn't quite sure what I would put on the inside either if it was abandoned. Like I just didn't really know what to do, but I am working on the other side of the graveyard now and there is a statue of Vlad. I can't say his full name because I honestly don't know it, <laughs> but Vladimir Strauss actually, is that his name? I know it's a little bit longer, I think too, but I believe that's his name. And I don't know, I wasn't necessarily thinking that it was 
him per se. I was just thinking that maybe it was some kind of memorial. I'm not quite sure. We don't have mausoleums in The Sims 4, which I kind of really wish we did. I think it was The Sims 3 is the most recent recollection that I can kind of pull from where I think there's actually a graveyard lot type in The Sims 3. I haven't played it in a long time now. I should probably dive in. I, I have all of the games. <laughs> I should probably do that. Um, but there's a graveyard lot type and I think there's a mausoleum. I think you can be like a part-time uh, mausoleum like attendant or something too. And the graveyards are always haunted. So that's kind of what I was thinking. It's not really a mausoleum, but it's at least a bigger statue, I suppose. I don't know. But now we're on to the interior and I use these really beautiful and spooky looking chandeliers from Vampire game pack, the vampire game pack. <laughs> and I also have just a ton of different candles in here because it just really adds to that spooky vibe. And I was going to use these kind of looking, they kind of look like pews from get together, but then I realized that we got one with the vampire pack. So I use those instead and I add some candles on the wall and at the front of the church, like I said, thinking that this was where, I don't know, people that were about to turn because I I know there's probably different schools of thought, but in The Sims, it's pretty instant. However, I think in a lot of actual lore about vampires and stuff like that, it is a little bit of a process. So I was thinking that the person that was about to be turned would be in this coffin at the front of the church. And then when they had completely turned and the transformation was successful, they would rise out of the coffin. It's so creepy, but I think such a cool thought. And that was just my idea because I really wanted to use this old school wooden looking coffin instead of a lot of the fancier ones that we have with vampires as well. And yeah, I just added a ton of candle details and then I end up putting curtains on the windows as well. I used the ones from the spooky stuff pack. I can say stuff, the spooky stuff pack. And I thought they were perfect. They were just the right height, I think. And then I end up actually kind of making a little bit of a is that considered a terrace? It's like a second floor and you can see down into the church. However, there's no access to that second floor because there really isn't room to get up there or do anything. But I just thought it was kind of a nice added feature instead of it being entirely open, if that makes sense. If there's an official name for that, definitely drop it in the comments down below because I have no clue. And then I add a statue of a gargoyle there and add a little runner rug which is also from vampires. And I didn't realize that we got one like that with Realm of Magic too, where you could kind of put the pieces together, which I think is actually kind of a neat idea. I like that with the rug, at least with runner rugs, it kind of works. And then I just add the crack details and everything inside as well to make it look very old and abandoned. And that is actually pretty much it for the build. So I hope you guys did enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed a rambly voiceover this morning and I will catch you guys next time I post a video and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.